Good afternoon, quilt ruddies. Well, we've been busy here. We've been busy in the beehive. And I want to um, tell you ahead of time, get your... Uh, I'm going to be stitching on some binding. Well, we do the chit-chat portion of this. And so get yourself a drink, go potty, and we shall stitch together a little bit. <sighs> it's kind of interesting what's been going on here. Um, I ended up uh, with a um, very much a hyper-focus um, couple of days. <laughs> a couple of days. But... Um, I embrace that um, those moments, uh, so uh, I'm feeling kind of good about myself. <laughs> Pat myself on the back. If you're new to Quilt Roadies, thank you for stopping by. Um, this is a channel that is predominantly about any kind of fiber work, such as quilting, wool stitching, sashiko, um, applique, I pretty much dabble in it all. If you're interested in um, cross stitch, that's over on the stitch roadie side of the channel, so you just have to Google and look, look for that. And I appreciate very much if you would subscribe and give me a thumbs up. I could use a thumbs up. Yes. Um, but before we get to uh, binding, uh, I'll tell you what happened. I realized it was the end of March. It was the end of March, and I have a retreat coming up in April. Um, my Fabric Stalkers, which is my longtime um, quilting group, um, we all work together at the hospital, and um, we are still, I got a cough drop, only because um, when I talk a lot, I start coughing. It's like my throat can't keep up with my brain. But um, let me just say that this quilt group, we've been together, and I've told you this before, we've been together for years, we um, work together, we um, raised our children, there's been uh, births, deaths, divorces, all manner of drama and excitement and exhilaration. This group has been together through all of that. And so it is one of my blessings in life. Um, and I look forward, we used to meet a lot more regularly, but as with life changing, so does locations where everybody lives. Uh, children have grown up, uh, some have moved away, so there's a lot more traveling going on, and grandchildren uh, added on top of that. So um, we cherish we cherish the moments that we get together. And uh, in the last few years, we've added um, a couple of family members, and that has been so fun. Um, yeah, so we do a retreat. We used to do them pretty regularly. We used to get together uh, regularly for a stitch day, but that is just harder and harder to do. But we kind of try to commit to a retreat at least once a year, and that's coming up in April. I wanted to, um, last year when we went on retreat, I mostly brought handwork. And this year I wanted to really balance it a little bit more and bring um, some actual piecing with me and take my sewing machine. Take, I have a little Janome gem, so I wanted to take that with me and um, actually piece some quilts, uh, which meant I had to get a little more organized. Oh yeah, this is where that story goes. So 
the hyper focus moment came when I walked into the beehive and I wanted to cut fabric and I realized that it looked like a bomb had gone off in here. And I know that many of you know what that looks like because it has happened in your own quilt rooms or homes for that matter. Yeah, my home has been somewhat chaotic. We are, we thought we'd be done uh, this week, but it's just a little bit more tweaking. So probably another couple days um, we'll be done with all the construction. But I came in and I said, I can't get organized till I clean this room. And when I started cleaning the room, I discovered more stuff. And then I'd, you know, go off this way or go off that way. And so it took me about three days, about three days to get to get this room to a place where I could think. And um, I don't know about you, but uh, sometimes that brain just will not that engine will not turn over until the carburetor's clean. And so that's what I spent. Um, that's what I spent uh, the last three days doing is <clears throat> picking up, moving things around, uh, discovering things, and just kind of having a little bit of fun because when you move things around and you get organized you you get re-inspired and I found that I was really excited all over again. I discovered two um, pillows that I made <clears throat> that were folded up in in a pile uh, that needed pillow forms and I did normally I make my own pillow forms what I do is I just take a couple pieces of muslin the size of the pillow I made and then I stuff it with polyfill so I have the exact size but because I was in this really really wanting to get going I just bought some pillow forms and luckily they they look you know it's not quite perfect but they they worked out pretty good so I wanted to show you one of them because look at that and you see all this comb and down here and the heart it's all um, French knots I've filled in French knots. But the reason I wanted to show you this pillow is because someone asked about the buttons that Marie, La Cigarettes de Marie, she provided for some of you. And you want to know what to do with the buttons. Well, although I didn't use those buttons on this pillow, when I saw this pillow, I said, oh my gosh, that's the perfect place to use those star buttons. Because see the top of the pillow, there's four buttons there. So you can use the those sweet wooden buttons on pillows, on wall hangings, on purses, however you want to use them. And G will have a, a page at the end uh, with um, four people's names who will be receiving a button pack. And all I will need you to do is to, they'll be in the drop down box, my email address, and you just need to send me your email so we can uh, converse about your mailing address. But isn't this cute? Now I did this. I love that I put the year on a lot of things that I did. This was 2001. Yes. And <clears throat> although I can't 100% say who the designer is, I'm thinking hatched and patched maybe or 
maybe one of you know, but I love that, love that chicken. So this pillow is all ready to go. And then I found this one, and it is um, Crab Apple Hill. So um, Meg Hockey, who is the designer of Crab Apple Hill, she uses a lot of um, color washing on her embroidery patterns. And um, now they use a lot of colored pencils, but before she was using a crayon. And so this was done with crayon. And it's a stitcher, stitch ex, number one best stitcher extraordinaire. And I did this in 2016. So, um, I love, I love, uh, I love a lot of small projects because, you know, sometimes you just want some satisfaction. And, and it was fun to, when I was cleaning, that I found these two pillows, and so now I am going to put them out. Yes. And see, here's another pillow. This is actually a stitching pillow I made uh, with Lisa Bongian of Primitive Gatherings, and I put a little seashell on there and a little place for... Uh, scissors. Oh, and I put my initials. <laughs> yes. Okay. <clears throat> so that was discovered in the cleaning process. <clears throat> what else has been going on? Well, I started Chester, and we had a cluster happened with Chester. Um, and I'll tell you what happened with poor Chester. So here is um, Chester, Kathy Schmidt's Forest Park Friends. <coughs> I got so excited stitching him. I started to embroider. And I suddenly thought to myself, boy, this embroidery is just a little tougher. Do I have the right needle? And what I had done was I had the back of Chester. I was holding the back to the front and I was embroidering through both layers. So I had to unpick and start over. But yes, he is coming along. So he got a little bit of love. I also, this last week, because this is what happens, um, When you're on a mission, that's I have to be careful when I'm on a mission because that's when I will uh, make a mistake or or something will happen. And I was driven um, by an entity outside myself to get started on this pattern that I got at Pioneer Quilts here in Portland. I just loved it. I just loved it. And so I immediately, uh, in my mind, uh, if I just, when I want to get something done, if I prep it, um, it's more likely to get done than if I just buy the pattern and file the pattern away. Um, because then out of sight, out of mind kind of thing. But if I prepped it, I um, have more chance of getting that done. So I was on a mission to get this thing prepped. And I did. And I've got a lot of it stitched. I pulled the wool out of my stash. 
and I'm now embroidering the words. And I used my Miso light table to um, prepare, you know, to set the pieces in the appropriate spots. And then I used a Micron uh, brown pen to trace the wording with my Miso light table. Um, I started, this is the thing, I started to satin stitch the letters and I didn't like the way they were looking. And when I looked at the pattern, see, she had done hers by back stitching. So I started back stitching it and I like the way it looks better. So I have just the lettering to get done and then I have to add some B's and I will be stitching those dimensionally and then making a pillow out of this for my front bench. But just to show you what happens is that I am so um, on a mission to prep it that I was cutting the fabric up and I, I cut the uh, little envelope that the pattern comes in right in half. It was underneath and so it got um, It got sliced in half. And that's why I have to really pay attention. Um, yeah, it just it sometimes just happens that way. But, you know, I just kind of bounce around and say, oh, well. <laughs> I had to laugh, though. I told, when I went down and told G, I said, I've not only embroidered two pieces of Chester together, I also sliced my uh, pattern um, baggy in half. Finally I got everything um, pretty much uh, straightened up and by straightened up I mean I got things put away a little bit more organized I and something happens when you um, kind of organize things you uh, feel more light-hearted and then things appear to be easier to do yeah so I started to cut the first kit. Um, my plan is to take at least two piecing kits with me along with handwork. And um, so I'm kind of excited about that. And the one that I cut out today is from the Fat Quarter Shop. Awesome. They give you enough fabric that if you make a mistake in the cutting, you're going to be able to recuperate from that. It's, um, I was really pleased. I was really pleased because I am not always the most accurate cutter. I, um, you know, the measure twice, cut once, and I'm constantly looking at the instructions over and over again to make sure that I'm cutting them correctly. But I have everything cut out now for this quilt. I'm very excited about this. Blue is not my favorite color, but this year it is my color of the year. And when I saw this by French General, um, I was, I thought, this is, this is gorgeous. I want to make this. And, um, I have never used a Jolly Bar, which is one half of a layer cake. And uh, they had it all kitted up. And so I have the whole thing already cut out and ready to sit down at a sewing machine and sew. So I'm going to just put it into a project bag and get it ready to travel. And then, then I'll cut out the next quilt later this week and then I'll have two projects ready to be pieced which is very exciting for me very exciting because I always say 80% of my life in here is handwork whether it be sashiko or Sue Spargo stitching or wool stitching you know I have uh, projects by Lisa Bongina Primitive Gatherings uh, Reets Rags to Stitches, Buttermilk Basin. I mean, I am just, um, you know, Sylvia Pippin. It's a lot of handwork because 
it brings me peace, but you have to also be that person that is okay with the long finish. It's not going to be um, like you're going to get it done. I mean, someone could be that person that sits down and, and gets it done, but I'm, I'm the long haul. I am the long haul. So, um, it's kind of exciting to have um, some piecing projects to take with me on retreat. It, and that is later in April I'll be doing that. Yeah, this blue, um, yeah. What's, you know, I always, whenever I think of French General, I always think of the red. So when I saw this blue on the Fat Quarter Shop, I was just blown away by how beautiful it was. Oh, and here, you can try this. Uh, a friend of mine did this on her floss tube. There's actually a QRS code. If you want more Jolly Bars, you can scan this QRS code. And she held it up to the screen, and the person was able to use their phone, and it took them right to the order. So there you go. That is going to be fun. I received some wonderful, wonderful uh, happy mail. And this came from Angela. Thank you so much, Angela. I, I am, I, I, I was blown away. Let me tell you. My friend Janine brought it from the shop. And, um, so I opened it, you know, when we were stitching together. And, um, every, we were all excited. We were all excited. So she sent me some uh, a charm pack of Beb, uh, Deb Strain's Be Be Grateful. I love that. And you know I love charm packs for especially for like um, table runners and such. They're so excited. but look at this. There is a whole. have to take it out of the bag because it's just so pretty. It's um, like a jelly roll strips. That is going to be really fun. And it's funny because one of the items in this box just totally cracked me up because I was thinking about, um, now, I like to make little vignettes or display areas around my house. A lot of times they have to do with the specific holiday, like St. Patty's Day, Valentine's Day, um, summer, autumn, um, Christmas, Thanksgiving. You know what I'm talking about. But just a, a couple weeks ago, I was thinking about making a display that would... Um, be up for the in-between times. You know, what would be the in-between? And the two I came up with were naturally bees, and the other was coffee. And so when I saw this little thing that she sent, I was just so tickled because it's going to be part of my uh, coffee display. It's a little sandwich board. Isn't that adorable? Yeah, so I'm going to make that into our little uh, coffee display. Now, Cheryl and I just about went crazy when we saw this because we're all about the hand stitching. And she sent this book. And Crazy Quilting, if you don't know what it is, it's a, it's a long-standing art form in which they took, um, they took scraps of fabric and they sewed them together and then embellished them into these beautiful, beautiful, um, either uh, 
quilts or pieces of clothing. A uh, long time ago, a little group that I stitched with, one of the gals um, was an absolute fabulous crazy quilter. And she crazy quilted two Christmas stockings, one for G and one for me. And they hang up every Christmas. They are absolutely gorgeous and that makes me think of her every year. And she's passed away a long time now, but boy, she was one awesome crazy quilter. So here is this book by Kathy Shaw. I'm just very excited about this. Because look at you don't have to make a big big thing. You can just um this actually shows you how to put together, but it also is giving you ideas for stitching. 56 full-size seam designs. I mean, these are absolute and I've never done um silk ribbon embroidery but it is makes me kind of curious about it. Oh, these are all just so gorgeous. Thank you so much, Angela. I'm, I very much appreciate that. I did, in the mail, get this thing. And I don't remember ordering it. It came with absolutely no information at all. Not even where it came from or who, what company or person it was sent by. It was in a, in fact, I, when I got the mail, I thought, is there even anything in here? And when I opened it up, there was this little template thing. Isn't that beautiful? I've never used one of these, and I don't know who sent it, because there was absolutely zero information. But it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah, so I think that's about caught up. Except for um, I spent a good <laughs> a good amount of time. You know, I I have this bag down here uh, of all the things that I purchased in. Um, Road to California. I know many of you have been curious about this one thing. Let me see if I can find it. Hmm. And that's the little um, tomato pin kit. It's a zippered little pin kit. And Let's see if it says who this is by. It's made with uh, buttons. See, it came with a zipper and some buttons. And let's see. Does it say heart to hand? Oh, of course. It's a heart to hand design. I'm going to have to make this sooner than later, huh? But I keep this bag. This is the bag I got from um, when I was down at Road, the little plastic bag that held, holds everything. But I couldn't find one of the kits, and I was going, what happened to that kit? So I spent a good three hours trying to figure out where it went. And um, now what did I do with it? <laughs> oh, here it is. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> I need an administrative assistant. I really want to do this. Um, uh, quilt Designs by Lori Smith. From my heart to your hands. It's just such a gorgeous, gorgeous wall hanging. It's so pretty. Well, I couldn't find it. It wasn't in this bag. And I and I thought, what the heck happened? What the heck happened? And then as I was cleaning and pawing through things, for some reason, I have no 
no logical reason for it, I took that one pattern and put it over in the pattern box. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> no rhyme or reason. No rhyme or reason at all. So, last night, I'm getting my binding out here. Um, I'm doing a facing on this quilt. This is the one I've been working on for a while. I want to get it out of the, off of the bench because, um, yeah, get it done. Can, I can say finish. So last night we were um, watching, um, you know, the, I don't know, there just isn't a whole lot um, to watch on television. Um, so we've been doing reruns, a little bit of reruns. The Reluctant Traveler is quite entertaining and that is with Eugene Levy. Um, he He's not fond of traveling. It's actually a travel show and he's not fond of traveling and so he goes to different places and exp you get to experience it firsthand if you're not uh, much of a, a traveler you'll, you'll be able to empathize with him and um, so that was entertaining, but we kind of blew through all of those. And um, then we watched the next episode of that, um, not Death in Paradise, but the new one. The Beyond Paradise, I think it's called. Beyond Paradise. And, and then... Um, Then I said I just needed a, a a laugh and a no not a lot of thinking, um, and so we watched uh, Vicar of Dibley, you know, because that always is um, that always is a good laugh. It's always a good laugh. Yeah. And I started a new book. Um, I'm still working my way slowly through the myth of normal, which I am very much enjoying. Um, and I started a new book, and it just goes to show you, I am a prolific reader. Um, my, I come from a family of readers. Uh, yeah. We, we are just all, you know, it's another form of entertainment. It's one of our forms of entertainment. And so I have this, um, I was lucky in that um, at one point in December, if you bought a certain amount at Barnes & Noble, you got this, um, my book journal. And I thought, how fun. Look at, I have my little B bookmark. Um... I said, how fun to, for, you know, a period of time, keep track of everything that I read. And, you know, you put the title and the author and the publisher and and uh, when you started it, when you finished it, and the main characters and then your thoughts on it. Um, but what's interesting to me is that as much as I have read, I know so little. And that's what keeps me reading, is um, there's no end in sight. It's, it's like the perfect life story. There's no end in sight. And this book, it was suggested because I know, uh, I can't remember who suggested it to me, but someone suggested it to me because I would not have... I know nothing about it, and 
it came up in my queue, and so I started in on it. It's a true story. It's based on a true story of a female sniper when the Nazis were trying to overrun Ukraine and Russia. It's just so interesting history. So the Nazis were trying to overrun the Ukraine and Russia. There was um, a female, uh, a woman who was a single mother. She um, worked at a library uh, who was inscripted into the army and became a sniper. And she, she was part of the Russian army hunting uh, Nazis. And she was quite famous in that circle. She was a young woman and she was befriended on a trip to the United States, uh, a goodwill kind of rah-rah trip during the war, um, she was befriended by Eleanor Roosevelt. Well, I've never heard of that. I've never heard that story or anything about it. It's called The Diamond Eye, and I... So I started that, and I, I, it, I'm excited about the fact that it's something I, I've never even heard of before. <clears throat> so I'll tell you how it is. If you don't aren't interested enough to go hunt it down and start it yourself. But yeah, the Diamond Eye. <clears throat> and it was, just, um, it was just published this year. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the... Uh, So it's a it's a brand new release. The next quilt that I'm going to cut cut out is a um, Villa Rosa design. You know, and those are, if you've ever seen them, been to a quilt shop or been to a show, those are those quilt designs that are printed on a um, postcard. And they're usually um, not only beautiful, but easy to construct. So they, they really showcase a fabric, a fabric line. So that's what I'm going to be doing the... Um, B, uh, the B fabric that I have pulled because um, it uses a, a couple charm packs and um, and there's I'm it would be interesting to go to other people's sewing rooms and see their um, their stacks of fabrics on you could I wonder if you could tell a lot about a person um, by what stacks, you know, like what color they like, but what's, I mean, I literally have um, a stack of fabric that has only something to do with bees. Um, my Halloween stack is pretty darn big, you know. Everyone probably has a, has some uh, Christmas fabric stash, you know, but it's, um, it's uh, kind of, I uh, just want to, it would be fun to get back into doing sewing room tours and just to see what other people collect. <laughs> yeah, so I'm I'm facing I, I'm instead of a binding I'm facing this quilt so the <clears throat> there isn't that uh, third there's not a third element. And I use these binding clips to hold it down. And I have a tutorial somewhere on Quilt Roadies. Probably if you Googled 
quilt roadie quilt roadies facing a quilt. There will be a, a, an actual tutorial um, about it. Uh, the boys took today off, so it's kind of quiet around here. We thought we would go to um, Aurora and go antiquing, and we woke up to snow falling and thought, uh, maybe we'll just stay home. So G's down in working on his workshop. And I'm up here trying to get the beehive organized and get some things done. Um, well, I'll let you go. It was lovely, lovely. Um, don't forget, at the end of this video will be a page with the list of people who get button packs. And so I look forward to hearing from you. Um, I hope everything's going well, and we shall see you the next time. Love you guys. Mm -hmm.